Hi. So I'm going to start with a question here. So I want you to raise your hand if you've ever been in this situation before. So something really funny happened at work or maybe at the gym or at the grocery store. It doesn't matter. But something fun happened and you just want to tell your friend about it. And you look forward to, to speak to your friend and let them know about this fun thing that happened. And you're super excited and you realize that you start talking faster and faster. And you know, you're just like, I want to tell the story right now. And then you reach the climax of the story. And at the whole time, your friend has been like, yeah, yeah. And then when they don't answer you, they look up and say, oh, sorry. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Great story. So have you encountered a situation like this before? Someone didn't listen to you? Yeah. How did it feel? Wasn't very nice. So I don't know you in the audience very well. Um, I'm not from Stockholm. I haven't seen any one of you before, I think. But I do know that we have one thing in common. And that is that we all need to listen in our work. Because what would happen if we stopped listening? I mean, I know as a developer, if I don't listen to what my product owner wants me to build, I would build a completely wrong thing. I would have no idea. And our end customers would be not very happy when we build something that we want to build, not what they need. <coughs> and it's the same regardless of what you do in your work, really. You need to communicate and do and listen. And I mean, how many things have something gone wrong just because you didn't listen carefully or maybe didn't listen, get it in a distorted way, right? So listening is paramount. So my name is Madeleine, Madeleine Schönemann. I am a software developer. I, um, I am not a C++ developer, unfortunately. Some of you might have seen my clueless face when Harald went through the C++ news. Uh, didn't know much there. I heard TypeScript and I was like, yes, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I work as a full stack developer in uh, .NET for backend and uh, JavaScript in the front end, mostly React. And uh, I'm also a Scrum Master in our team. And I work 20% of my time as something called a competence lead, which means that I work with uh, developing my colleagues' um, competence within interpersonal skills. So it's very nice. I, uh, I find it very important to have both hard skills and soft skills. So I'm very happy that I get to do both of the things that I love doing. Um, I work at a company called 1337. Um, I work in Malmö, but we have offices here as well. So you might have seen it sometime. I also uh, do a podcast called Developers Mer and Bara Kod, uh, together with Sofia, who is also here today. Um, we talk about everything related to software development. So if you want to hear a podcast, it's in Swedish though, but I've heard it's good to practice your Swedish through it as well. So you can uh, check it out. It's on um, all the po podcast platforms. But uh, I'm here today to talk about five things you can do to become a better listener. Yeah, that's Sophia. <laughs> but first, let's talk about why we are bad listeners. There's actually an explanation for it. So basically, the problem is that we talk or we think much faster than we talk. So the average rate of speech is around 125 words per minute. And that's quite slow for the human brain because our brain can work at much, much faster speeds than that. Uh, and that means that when we listen, our brain receives words at a much slower rate than they want to comprehend and it's much slower than their own capa capability. So there's no wonder that we sometimes start thinking about our grocery list or what we're going to do tonight when we get home, when someone talks. So listening, it is quite hard. I think we all can agree on that. So let's get right on to what we are going to do instead. 
So the first key today is that you should listen with the same passion as you want to be listened to. And that means that you should not be tempted of doing something else when you listen. So multitasking is a big no-no. It's there's someone here who thinks multitasking works because all research shows that it doesn't. And I mean, uh, if you try to listen to a podcast while you type something, you realize that you start typing what you hear. So it, it's not a good idea to multitask. And the brain doesn't have the capability to focus on two cognitively challenging tasks at the same time. So um, you can't write a text message at the same time as your friend tells them your story. You won't be focused. It's just a fact. So when someone is speaking to you, you should just put away your phone and turn off the TV, close your laptop, and make sure that you are focused on them. And this also shows the person that you care enough to listen to them with your full focus. And you want to focus on them. So it's nice for the listener. Research actually shows that uh, just the mere presence of a smartphone affects the conversation negatively. Um, in a study made in 2014 called the iPhone effect, researchers placed um, 200 participants and combined them to uh, pairs and they got to sit down together in a coffee shop. And um, they were just having coffee, talking together and enjoying the conversation. They also had research assistants that were observing them from a distance to see how they behaved and everything. And they observed that um, if someone used a smartphone or if they looked at it or if they got a text messages or if it was just placed next to them on the table, like just lying there. And when the time was up and they were finished with their study, um, the participants were asked to uh, reply to a series of questions and they were asked like, uh, how did you rate this conversation? Was it fulfilling? Did you feel connection? Did you feel an emotional connection to the person you talked to? And um, the results, what did it say? It actually said that if one of the participants or both, but if one of them used their phone in any way, uh, even if they just put it on the table and didn't interact with it at all, it was just lying there. The conversation was rated to be less fulfilling than for the ones who uh, had a conversation without any smartphone present at all. So the next time you have an important conversation coming up, you might want to consider not bringing your phone at all. And if you do need, I mean, we all need our phones in some way. Um, but you should definitely not use it, because the conversation will be less good. So the second key today is to be present. So you should be mindful of your inner dialogue. Like, even though the brain is fast and want to think fast and everything, you should try to slow down and don't jump to conclusions. And I know I'm super guilty of doing this as well. You know, sometimes you talk and you're so focused on thinking of what you're going to reply and what you're going to say next. And you realize that you didn't listen to them at all. That's not a good thing to do. So listen to what the other person says. And listening is not only about the words that they speak. It's also about their body languages and um, how they behave. So look out for like, um, tense shoulders or trembling hands if they're nervous or like raised eyebrows. All these are signs that our body uses to communicate how we feel. And they should also be heard. And you can learn a lot from a person's body language, um, from their tone of voice or from their how they speak. So sometimes it's more to a message than just a word that a person says. And if you're just mindful, you can find out a lot about what they actually think or what they feel. But not only that, it's not only about the person you listen to, it's about yourself as well. So your body language that you use also matters. 
So listening, it's not just a passive endeavor, it's, it's highly active actually. So you should, you should try to be a good listener by you know, having eye contact, of course, by uh, you know, just nodding to see that you are a part of the conversation, you, you are interested. Um, and face the person. I mean, it's not funny to talk to someone who's like facing another direction or more interested in something else. So don't forget your own body language as well. One common misunderstanding that I've seen is that you should be completely silent when you listen. And that's, that's wrong. I mean, have you ever been in a conversation when someone just sits there? It's, it's quite awkward after a while if they don't say anything at all. Um, so you can use like short comments to uh, reply and to affirm that you are getting what they are saying. Just like, um, you know, just a small nod and yeah, mm, just, just filler words. Um, or like, no way, did that really happen? I mean, all those things are good. And lastly, you should of course match their energy. So if the person who talks to you and tells their story are super excited, you should be excited too and like, oh, that's so fun. And if they are sad or, you know, calmer, you should reply in a softer voice and a more compassionate voice to show them that, yeah, it would be strange if you are super happy when they tell them about their dog who had to pass away or something. And all these it usually comes natural for us. We, we usually don't think about this, but when we are stressed, it's easy to forget it. And so it's a good thing to, um, to keep in mind if you are stressed or distracted. So the third key, don't be a conversation killer. And you probably encountered this as well, something, um, Something happened that you want to tell about. For example, um, I went skiing for the first time in my life this year. I've never skied before. So I went to a place in uh, uh, just outside Skåne uh, by Hallandsåsen. And uh, it was my first time and I of course was proud of myself. I didn't break a leg or anything and I wanted to tell everyone about my amazing ski trip for one day. And. Uh, Someone else who listened was like, oh yeah, I was also skiing. I went to uh, Chamonix and I uh, went away for a week and it was so fun and we drank beer in the um, hill every day and I had such a great time. I was like, oh, okay, good, good for you. Uh, what am I going to say now? <laughs> That's not very fun. But we all have someone in our vicinity who likes to, you know, brag a bit or, you know, steal the spotlight. Um, the boaster, we can call them. Don't be that person. Um, there are quite a lot of different conversation killers. So, um, as I said, the boaster, someone who wants to be better or have a story that is better, could be the other way around as well. Like, uh, you tell them about that one time you sprained your ankle and they were like, okay, yeah, I broke my whole leg. And it's like, okay, you have to be worse. <laughs> Come on, what are you going to say? Um, we have uh, the judge, someone who always judge what you say. And it doesn't have to be that they judge you in a negative way. It's just that they label your story like, oh, you must have felt good or bad or, and sometimes it doesn't have to be what people think. So it's good to not put any uh, labels onto a story that you hear because it can throw the speaker a bit uh, off, um, off track. We also have the storyteller, someone who immediately thinks of their own story that they need to tell. So it's a bit related to the one who tries to boast, but they just realized they thought about something else. We have the controller someone who tries to steer the conversation into what they want to talk about. They aren't very interested in, in your conversation. And then we have my uh, favorites because I'm super guilty of this. The person who wants to fix every problem that they hear. And um, 
sometimes people don't want a solution to their problems. Sometimes they just want someone who validates them and says, that sucks. And it's hard for us as developers. We are problem solvers by nature. Of course, we want to solve people's uh, problems. But sometimes it's good to just, just listen and validate. And um, one good tip that, tip that I heard was that if someone tells something hard, or a problem, you can ask them a simple question. And that is, do you want comfort or do you want solutions? It's a really good advice to know what, how you should react to them. Sometimes you just want to just like let go of your horrible day that you had. You don't want someone to find a solution to your colleague who messed up and did a bug in production or whatever. Then we have the fourth key. It's about being empathic and validate. And empathy, as you probably all know, is um, the foundation of genuine connection. It is the ability to be able to feel what other people feel. Um, you enter into their emotions and feel them. So in contrast to sympathy, it, which is when you can understand what they feel, uh, empathy is more like stepping into the other person's shoes and instead of feeling for them, you feel with them. And empathy is something that doesn't always come naturally for all of us, but there are a few steps that you can uh, do to help you uh, develop it. The first one is to uh, ask yourself questions. So try to think about um, who is this person? Why? What's their background? Like, do they have any past traumas or something that might influence them? Uh, if someone suddenly becomes irrationally mad, you can think like, okay, what have they been through before that made them react in this way? There's usually an explanation to it. Um, or you can think like, how would I feel if someone did this to me? Would I feel happy, sad? Um, just by observing them and looking at them, you can also realize that they are also a person. Like, I, some of us are self-centered. I am as well sometimes. But if you just like make eye contact and think like they are a person too, they also have their own hopes and fears and joy and everything that makes them happy. It's easier to feel what they feel. And this tip here, imagine them as a child, seems a bit ridiculous. It's not the, what you think you would do, but it's actually easier to feel empathy for a small child than it is for an adult. So try to picture them as a four-year-old and see how they would react. One important thing is also to identify your own emotions. Because it's super hard to feel someone else's emotions if you don't even know how you feel yourself. And this is scary to dig, dig into yourself. Um, but you can't feel empathy if you don't know what they are feeling. And that's uh, being able to identify emotions is the first step to do this. So um, how are you feeling right now? Anyone? Hungry? Yeah. <coughs> Good. Good to identify. We have meal coming up soon. <laughs> Anyone else? Happy. I'm enjoying your talk. Oh, Good. <laughs> Glad to hear. <laughs> so try to think a bit more like how do you feel in different situations. Um, and lastly, don't judge your emotions. So it's okay to feel hungry. I mean, it's uh, almost seven. <laughs> it's a long way since we had lunch. Um, so the next time you notice an emotion within you, don't, don't try to avoid it or resist it or just push it away. That's not a good idea. Instead, try to just accept it. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to feel sad when something happened. I mean, no, no emotion is bad. It's just that we are so used to labeling emotions as good or bad. If you just accept it, it makes a lot of difference. And 
it will be easier for you to develop empathy for others. So you might think, what does empathy have to do with listening? Well, we need to be more than just a listening ear to people. We also need to um, make sure that they feel heard and seen and understood. So good listeners, they do more than just uh, listening. They also validate the person. So when you validate, you, um, you uh, recognize and affirm their feelings. And it's basically like telling someone, OK, I understand that you feel this way. I hear you. I get it. And it's OK. So the first step is to identify what they are feeling. That's why you need empathy. And then you offer them some justification for feeling that feeling. So one example of this could be uh, someone walks up to me and says that, um, uh, or yeah, someone told me, and I reply like, she really told you that um, uh, SQL databases are for losers and Cassandra is the only <laughs> database you need? Yeah, I would be upset too. <laughs> That's not very nice to say that. What you should not do is to provide invalidating responses. So uh, an invalidating response could be like, oh, you'll be fine, or like, it could be worse. Yeah, of course it could be worse. It, maybe it isn't a big deal what they are feeling. You, you could be right. It might not be a big deal at all. But it's not what they want to hear. They want to be validated. And the person is worried for a reason. So it's important that you acknowledge that, even though you might think they are wrong. So instead of saying, like, um, don't worry about that bug, um, I'm sure you will solve it soon. I mean, it, it might sound as a nice thing to say to someone, <coughs> but it, it is invalidating. So one better thing to say instead could be, like, wow, I, I totally get your frustration. It seems like a really tough nut to crack. You see the difference? And validation is equally important for positive emotions as well. So a study made in 2004 demonstrated that in romantic relationships, um, they are rated higher in commitment and overall satisfaction, um, trust and intimacy when people uh, validated each other. And they had less conflict, so people didn't fight with each other uh, if people validated good fortune for each other. So if I come home and tell my partner that uh, I got a salary raise and he's really happy for me, that's good. What is more surprising is that if your partner or friend also, but this study was for romantic relationships, if your partner says something that is more passive constructive, like, uh, oh, that's nice, or, you know, something that sounds good but doesn't really sound from the heart, it has the same correlation with negative relationship <laughs> outcomes as if they would say something actually mean. So just by saying, oh, that's nice, maybe looking at their phone, is equally bad as saying, you don't deserve a race. So try to reply to someone's excitement with equal ex ex excitement. And uh, if you answer with an obvious lack of interest, um, even though the comment itself is uh, positive, it might be just as harmful as being really rude. So that's something to think about. It's, uh, it's easy to, um, you know, you're tired after work and you just, yeah, good for you. Fifth and last key is to be curious. And we are all detectives in a conversation. We are there to gather information and to um, discover more about what they want to tell us. And one thing you can do is to ask powerful questions. And they can sound like, um, I'm curious to hear more about C++. Uh, please tell me more about Cassandra. Can you elaborate? Or uh, can you help me understand? Or how might we is a common thing as well to say. 
and of course ask follow-up questions to a conversation. It's it's hard to forget that. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to a dinner when you didn't know anyone before, and when you come home in the evening you feel like, <coughs> wow, I had the best conversation in my life. This was the best evening ever. Usually that happens when the other person at your table asked you a lot of questions and made you talk. They didn't talk so much about themselves. If you think back, maybe you don't know that much about that person because you got the chance to talk. So it's a tool you can use to be that person that people really enjoy. If you just are curious and ask a lot of questions and make them feel heard and seen, they will think like, wow, this was the night of my life. If you find it difficult to be curious, you can just take some time to stop and consider the following mantras, if you like. So think like, this person is worth listening to. Or, I don't know how this conversation is going to unfold, but I want to connect with this person. Or, I will listen for who they are. I will be curious about what they are going to say. And I will try to sense their perspectives, feelings, actions, and desires. So just by trying to get into this mindset, you can be more curious. So let's talk about interest. Um, interest is also an es essential part of listening. And um, unfortunately, many of us experience that curiosity kind of declines when you are in a close relationship to someone, maybe a partner or a friend or a colleague. You might feel that you've already heard everything they are going to say. And we think that we know everything about this person already. Like, I've heard this story a million times, right? But if we instead try to think about, I've heard this before, try to think like, like the information is new. Try to see it in a different light and try to find some other angle that you haven't thought about before. You might hear it differently. I mean, you might even make progress in your conversation. And uh, if the person really is talking over and over again about the same thing, it might be a clue that uh, they are doing so, doing so because they aren't feeling heard. So if you really try to listen, um, you will hear more. And don't stop being curious. So why am I telling you all this? It's because I genuinely think that all relationships can be improved if we become better listeners. Regardless if it's in work or with a partner or a friend or your parent, any relationship will be better. And if you don't believe me, just take one week and try it. Like, try these five tips and see if they make a difference for you. So, to repeat, you should listen with the same passion as you want to be listened to. You should be present. You should watch out for conversation killers. You should be empathic and validate. And you should be curious. And one last thing I want you to remember is that we have two ears and one mouth, which means that we should listen twice as much as we speak. So, thank you so much for listening to my five keys to become a better listener. Um, I would love to connect with you. I think it's fun to talk to new people and I'm very new to the C++ community. So, uh, you can add me on LinkedIn. As I said, if you want to listen to our podcast, it's developers, Mirambara Code. We have an Instagram where we post our stuff. I don't do Twitter, so uh, no need to look there. Um, yeah, any questions? Sometimes that 
but the speaker doesn't really care if I'm listening or not. And yeah, what, what you come across in that, it's really like a responsibility on the speaker to actually make sure that they say something that should be interesting to the one who's listening. Yes, I would say so. I mean, every conversation is a dialogue in some way, so you are always two persons or more. Um, otherwise, it would just be a monologue. It's not that interesting. Um, it depends on the situation. So if it's your manager presenting something important to you, of course, it's a different situation from when you talk to your wife. Um, in the first case, I would say it's more important that they think about how they present something and that you get the value from it. They probably have something important to tell. Uh, if it's just a regular conversation with your spouse or something, maybe it doesn't have to be something in it for you. Maybe they just need to get their chest off something or whatever. Um, so if you just have a normal day-to-day -day conversation, I would say it's not equally important for a speaker. But of course, you don't want to be that person who just talks and talks and talks and lets no one else speak either. So of course, as a speaker, you also bear some responsibility to make sure that it's a conversation. It is definitely harder to communicate online. Um, I haven't looked into it particularly like you mentioned, but I've seen studies that when you have interactions online, you need to do them much more. So you need to exaggerate, uh, for example, your gestures and everything, your body languages. It doesn't uh, come through the screen or the camera as much as when you are face to face. Um, and it might feel ridiculous to use like extravagant body language when you sit in Microsoft Teams or something. Um, but it's good to do it. Um, as for casual conversations, they are also harder to have online. Or it depends. I mean, many of us probably come from a background where we have been using like TeamSpeak or ventrilo or whatever if we have gamed so many of us perhaps feels that it's easy to talk to people online um, but looking at the society as a whole it has been a shift for many to have this kind of online conversation um, i lost my track now where am i going with this <laughs> it is hard i mean uh, and my <coughs> tip generally is to exaggerate more I don't know if that answered your question. So for, for the Zoom, yeah, I can be more, it's, it's harder in the chat to actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, having just uh, a text communication is, of course, different. Use yeah. a lot of emoji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> No, don't scream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, how do you balance the respect for your own time with being a good listener? Because I find one route that can lead to if you really know you really want to be a good listener, you really want to make sure people feel listened to and heard, 
but at the same time you might end up endlessly listening to someone droning on maybe you are busy maybe your time also is valuable mm. i mean it is mm. um how do you balance that in a good way do you have some tips on that i would say that your time is valuable and if you are busy or if you have something that you need to do it's better to tell them like I really want to hear what you're saying, but I really have to fix this. Can we talk again in uh, 10 minutes or can we talk tonight? It's better to do that than listening half, half. So uh, people notice if you are distracted. Um, if you don't have time to talk at all, then you might have to consider, is this relationship important to me? Or is it someone who I don't really care about? Like it's a balance you have to do. Um, but it's, I always think it's good to be honest. If you don't have time, say it instead of losing focus. Great, Great timing. Thanks, Madeleine. Thank you.